What's up everybody, this is Chris from Big Bolt Media and we are going to help you photograph lightning. Excuse me, it's always the phone to look it up on. Um, I forget the name of the app. I hate this. Radar Scope. It's called Radar Scope. Check out Radar Scope. Radar Scope. What's up guys? We're here to help you photograph lightning. Every time we in Big Bolt Media upload uh, lightning posts to Facebook or Instagram or social media, we always get asked questions about what our settings were and how do we capture lightning. So we're going to uh, address all this in a series of YouTube videos and this is the first one. But before we get started, Let's meet the Big Bolt Media guys. What's going on guys? I'm Damon Powers with Big Bolt Media. Hey, I'm Justin Labity and my Instagram handle is at Justin underscore Labity. CH808 shoots. James White here with uh, Big Bolt Media. My private handle is at jhwhite50 on Instagram if you'd like to follow me. Right. Hi everyone, my name is Matt Roback. Uh, my Instagram handle is here, uh, Matt underscore Roback, R-O-B-A-C-K. And I'm a member of Big Bolt Media. My name is Dan Idell. Um, my Instagram handle is dano7886. And I'm with Big Bolt Media. The first thing you need to do to photograph lightning is find lightning could be just as easy as looking up at the sky and seeing a storm cloud. Hey, there's some lightning. I think I'll photograph lightning. <laughs> Sometimes it's that easy at summertime in Florida. Other times it's not that easy. Other times you need a dedicated radar app in order to track storms, which we do on a daily basis during storm season. So. There are some free apps out there that you can use. Uh, Weatherbug, Storm Radar by the Weather Channel, the Weather Channel, <laughs> and uh, your your local news wherever you live will usually have a free radar app uh, for your region. They usually help. They're all free, or or at least typically free. Um, the radar app that we use specifically is called Radar Scope. Now we're not sponsored by Radar Scope. Um, disclaimer: I wish we were. Hey, Radar Scope, sponsor us. <laughs> we use your product a lot, and we're going to get into Radar Scope a little bit here. But for starters, it's a paid app. It costs ten dollars to download the app, and then it's a ten dollar per year subscription. And there's also a higher level uh, pro subscription that's even more. But we found that uh, the, the $10 a year subscription gets us uh, everything we need to track lightning. And it's really outstanding. And we're going to go into it uh, in a little bit of detail for you today, here, in this episode. By using this, we can formulate exactly where the storms are going to go and how much lightning they may produce and where they may produce that lightning. So we can be in front of the storm, set up, ready to go when the lightning's firing. So when you open up Radar Scope, this is gonna be your list of radars, that bar. So you click on that bar, and right now we're gonna to go to where, what's the normal default is your super res reflectivity. Now this is a really good um, one size fits all um, radar. We like to use the precipitation depiction here, like with the arrow you can see there's a boundary line there. But one of the main ones for chasing lightning is this one, the Digital Ville, vertically, <coughs> vertically integrated li liquid. 
Uh, we also use the echo tops. That's going to tell us how big the, the storm clouds are. Um, now, on the bottom left, you tap on that and that is uh, your location. You tap it again and you can move your phone around and see where, uh, what direction the storm's coming from. The next button, it toggles back and forth between the city landscapes and the radar towers. This is the Tampa Bay Tower. Now I'll switch over to the Melbourne Tower, now down to the Miami Tower, and across to the uh, Florida Keys, the Key West Tower. Hey, what's that? Uh, back to the Tampa Tower. And if we tap on um, the toggle it again there, and it'll come back on with the, um, uh, the cities and those red dots are storm chasers. So the, the next one is the play button. Um, that, that's kind of obvious once you hit the play, it, it goes in motion and it'll go for how many frames, it'll go back to how many frames and you can set the frames, the frame rate. So you can, I think I have it going 12 or 14 frames back. This next screen is, will allow you to do a double radar screen. And so this time I'll have the precipitation depiction and the vill going at the same time. I'll let that play so I can see both of them. They, they work a little differently um, to the same effect, helps you track it a little better. There's also the option here to record, do a screen recording. If you wanted to hit that button, it'll record it um, right to your phone. So that, that's helpful if you, maybe if you wanted to, to send it to a friend or tweet it or or something like that. It'll save it. And here, save video file. <clears throat> okay, so I'll go back to the VIL because that's normally the, the most common one that I'll use uh, to track lightning. I'll let it go. And now on the top left, that button is our distance um, perimeter. So I'll be able to, to hit that and, and go from um, just to measure how far away storms are. Like this one in particular at this moment is 28 miles away and I'm measuring it from my location. I don't have to measure it from my, my location, but it's usually good to do that. I'll do it again. This is a little smaller cell, it's a little closer. It's only 19 miles away. So that's a really good tool to show you how close the lightning is to you and that way it'll keep you safe. Now up top here on the left, um, we can switch out from the, the distance to the inspector and the inspector is going to tell us how high, how tall the, the cloud tops are. Um, the color representation, uh, when it gets into the green and red, then it gets the bigger and bigger, but we're looking for over 30,000 feet, usually before they, they start sparking um, and throwing some bolts. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they could throw bolts under, under 30,000 feet, but it's usually a good uh, barometer. And hey, look, here's a storm chaser. That's, that's what those red dots are, storm, storm chasers. The storm spotter network. As you can see here, the red dots represent folks in the Storm Spotter network, which Damon, Justin, and myself also belong to. In the super res reflectivity here, this is a, a cold front that came through our area last week, and I recorded this. As you can see, that the two, a pretty defined ridge line. You can see the, the two storm tracks, the white storm tracks that are almost touching each other. It, it's not always the case when you see uh, a ridgeline defined that well. But here we can see a boundary popping out, which I'm drawing the arrow to point out. Now we're always on the lookout for, for boundaries, for boundary lines and boundary collisions, because that's a really good indication that we're going to see some combustion and some lightning and, and stuff. So um, th this one's a really good, a well-defined ridgeline. Uh, but uh, again, that's not always the case. We're always on the lookout for boundaries. OK, 
Okay, this was from an extreme weather event on November 6th. As you can see, these trapezoids of doom, they are severe weather warnings. And on the top right, with the number in red, you tap on that, and that brings up all the severe weather warnings and all the information. You can see the information button on the right in the circle. You can also see what time the warning expires on the left. This is great, great, great information to have when you're out there in storms. And now you have a storm tracker with the base button of the cell. You press on that and you tap on that and it'll bring up the information like so. Again, you have that little information circle there that you can tap on if need be. You can also see the hail size is a half inch in diameter, which is pretty crazy. And you see all the lightning around. It's a major storm. But once you tap on the base of that storm tracker, it gives you a timeline, a projected timeline, as you can see, 1.25 a.m., 1.40 a.m., 1.55 a.m. and to 2.10 a.m. where it's estimated to that cell to peter out. This is great, again, more great information for when you're out there tracking storms, trying to see where they're going, trying to be safe. All, all that information is just uh, phenomenal to have. So here's another um, cell. You tap on that information button right there and it brings up all the pertinent information that any weather nerd or meteorologist would absolutely love um, deep into the uh, into the information okay now we have another uh, storm tracker that has been given a little tornado icon now we can tap on that tornado icon and it again brings up the cell information and uh, just Great stuff to have, great information to to have when you're out in the field. So we give Radar Scope the obvious thumbs up. It, it is the app to have, and in my opinion, invaluable. Radar Scope is really in depth, and we don't use a ton of it for chasing lightning. What we do use, we know. We know fairly well that the digital bill, the echo tops, and the precipitation depiction seems to be all, all we really need to track these storms and know where to be and know where they're going to start sparking. And hopefully this helped you um, navigate radar scope a little bit. If you have any questions, hit them in the comments below and we'll try and get to them uh, if we can. We don't know everything about radar scope, but, but we know what we know and we will help where we can. So, happy storm chasing. Go get those bolts. If you like these videos, hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up on this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe for more, subscribe for more. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.